guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I have another fantastic maths game for you to help your children at home or in the classroom with their ability to count. And we're going to use a game that we all know, which is bowling. Now, if you like this video today, please do me a favor, hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, Mr. K Teaching, please hit the subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated. Let's get into bowling today. First of all, what do you need to actually set things up? Well, number one, you'll need 10 paper cups. You'll also need a ball. Now, a tennis ball is really good for this. Uh, also, a pen and a score sheet. And we'll talk about how to set up the score sheet so you can maximize your child's learning in a second. Uh, now, set up and play. Let's talk about set up first of all. Set up, basically line up the cups as pins in front of a wall. If you do that in front of a wall, there's a good chance you won't lose the ball that easy. I've seen people try and play it in front of chairs and tables and it, obviously the ball goes through and, and goes into the, chip, the legs of the chairs and tables and you know it's hard to get it out. So that's a, a bit of a tip there. Um, beyond that, obviously set it up in that triangle you know that we normally use for bowling and you can see an example of that here. Uh, also, remember uh, to determine the distance that the bowler is from the pins when they're bowling the ball and make that consistent because um, obviously if they're too close, they're going to hit over a lot of pins. If they're too far away, they're not going to hit over enough pins. You want to strike that good balance where, you know, when they're bowling, they get a variety of um, pins knocked over so they can practice different counting. Excellent. Now let's talk about actually playing the game, okay? Um, so player one bowls while number two player does the counting and uses the score sheet. Now the great thing about this is that they both end up counting what's being bowled over, okay? If you do it like that, getting number two to actually use the score sheet. Now the score sheet, when you draw it up, I would probably draw it up something like this when we're practicing our counting. Um, Obviously, you've got, you know, your first turn, uh, and then in the second column, you've got um, them counting the physical item and making separate groups. So that's a bit of a counting strategy, you know, because a lot of the time when kids keep um, something together or a group of things together and just count it together, they can double count things. So we teach them the strategy of, you know, when you're counting things, try and make a separate group so you don't lose your count. So that's one strategy, that's in the second column, they'll write the number in there. Then uh, in the third column, there's another strategy which is draw it. So you know, uh, when they're counting something, they can write down on a piece of paper a mark for each one they count. And that's another way of helping them not lose their count when they're counting something. And then finally, um, the last strategy is in the last column there and it's called crossing the item out. Um, when you actually are counting it. So in this case, you know, you might have something on the on the page and you need to count it. So normally you'd have, the best thing to do would be to put through, put lines through the things that you're counting on paper. So once again, the child doesn't lose their count. Excellent. So that's the best way, I think, to set up um, the score sheet uh, to make sure that the child maximizes their learning and uses different strategies in different situations, either counting physical items or something on a piece of paper. Anyway, let's now take a look at a game. Okay, so the guys are about to play a game of bowling, which is really great for counting. Um, and you can see one of the students here about to bowl a tennis ball in this case, and then they're gonna aim them at the pins at the other end. And depending on how many pins they knock over, well, they'll be able to count those and use their counting strategies. Excellent, okay, go for it. Whoa! Okay. So there you have it, an example of how the game is played. Now let's talk about variations that you can do to this game to change it a little bit to actually help extend your child's maths ability. One way you could use this game is to practice the child's addition. So example, they bowl once, they knock over three pins, then they bowl again, they knock over two pins. So three plus two equals five. And another thing you could do is actually use it to practice subtraction. So, uh, for example, the child starts out with 10 pins, they knock over 3 pins, so 10 take away 3 equals 7. And the final way of using this game, uh, or change it as a variation to extend your child's learning, is to practice multiplication. So you could do this if they're studying multiplication by saying, okay, well your first bowl, say it's a 3, 
times your second bolt, say that's a two. So three times two equals six. Excellent. Listen, I hope you get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. Uh, I know that the kids at school normally do. Uh, and yeah, look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye.